Hello and welcome back to Chemistry Time. Today we'll be continuing our discussion on gases. Up until now, we have only discussed ideal gases. But as you must suspect, gases don't always behave in an ideal manner. As we have discussed previously, if we have one mole of an ideal gas at STP, it will have volume of 22.41 liters. The following graph compares the mol molar volume of an ideal gas to real gases. In comparison, real gases do have volumes close to 22.41 liters, but they also show signs of deviations from ideality. It is important to point out that gases do not always act similar to that of ideal gases. Real gases deviate from ideality at high pressures or low temperatures. The reason being is that at high pressures, the space that gases occupy is notable. And if we go back to earlier lessons, ideal gases are assumed to have no volume. At low pressures, the space between gas molecules are so far apart that the volume they occupy is negligible, but as you increase pressure, it becomes more significant. In addition, another assumption that is made for gases is that the effect of intermolecular attractive forces is negligible. At low pressures and high temperatures, the molecules are so far apart they do not experience these forces. However, at high pressures and low temperatures, Intermolecular attractive forces are more prevalent and can affect collisions, which in turn decrease the pressure. Based on these deviations, van der Waals suggested correction factors to the ideal gas equation to include the effect of intermolecular size and intermolecular forces. This equation is known as van der Waals equation, where the terms A and B are constants that depend and differ between gases. The last concept that I want to briefly cover is the fusion. Diffusion is the spread of gas particles throughout a container. When a gas is released into a container, the particles spread out evenly until they reach an equilibrium. This is why when someone is cooking in the kitchen, it can take a few minutes before you can smell it in the other room. The diffusion of gases is limited by the molecular weight of the gas. This means lighter gas particles like helium will diffuse much more quickly than a heavier gas like xenon. As a brief review to conclude our discussions on gases, we know there are a number of assumptions that are made for ideal gases, such that gases occupy negligible space, they are in constant motion, they do not experience intermolecular attractive forces, and the average kinetic energy of gas molecules is proportional to temperature. When gas is diffused, the heavier the gas molecules are, the slower it will diffuse in comparison to a lower molecular weight gas. We also discussed the ideal gas equation and how it can be simplified to a number of other gas laws, depending on what factors are held constant. Dalton's law of partial pressures gave us insight into gas mixtures and that each individual gas exerts its own pressure, known as a partial pressure. The sum of all partial pressures equals the total pressure of your system. In addition, gases do not behave like ideal gases and deviate at high pressures and low temperatures. The van der Waals equation corrects and considers for intermolecular forces and particle volume. Hopefully you have enjoyed Chemist Tea Time and I look forward to delving further into chemistry with you. Until next time.